a assessment's got lots of different meanings. It, it in its broadest sense, it just means any use of a computer when you're assessing students. So that can include really simple things like just a student submitting a piece of work by using a computer. Um, but it can also be in things like assessing collaborative work using online collaborative work. It can include giving feedback by way of an audio file. Um, it can include the use of e-portfolios. So lots and lots of different ways in which you can use technology in assessment. I've come to use it to mean something quite specific, which is computer marked assessment. Um, that's been the focus of my work. It doesn't mean to say I think that's more important than anything else, but it is one particular area. Um, so computer marked assessment, it even that has a variety of uses. It can mean just where the computer marks the piece of assessment as right or wrong. It could be a multiple choice question, could be something where people have got to give a long answer but typed into a computer. Um, and it can also vary whether or not you just mark the answer as right or wrong, or as in my case where you're doing quite sophisticated things. So the answers are given as typed in as sentences and we give detailed targeted feedback. I think we want to make e-assessment more authentic, more like real life, really. I think if I start now talking about my definition of e-assessment, well, the use of e-assessment that I've used the most, the computer marked assessment, I think in some ways it's got quite a bad press because it's become like, well, we'll ask these multiple choice questions um, which isn't a very lifelike thing to do. It's not what happens in real life. Um, so I think we have to try and make that our practice more like real life, which is why I've been trying to, rather than getting people to select options, getting them to write their own answers down. Um, and I think that things like the use of... Um, assessing collaborative activity I think there's huge potential in that we want students to be collaborating in an online environment so we want to be assessing that collaboration in an online environment and that's really a very obvious thing to do and it's a very authentic thing to do I think in a sense I'd almost turn that the other way round I think that if you're talking about the use of e-assessment I think there's a sense in which you can do everything you can do in an online setting that you would do in a face-to-face -face setting and actually the advantage is that when we're teaching in an online setting people are used to working online so to be honest why wouldn't you use e-assessment it seems the most obvious thing in the world if you're teaching online to also be assessing online there's just one small potential difficulty with doing assessment online and that is to do with the verification of who the students are that you're assessing. If you're talking about assessment that's high stakes assessment, in other words where it matters, um, I think it can be quite difficult to know that it's actually the student rather than um, you know somebody pretending to be that student. There's been quite a lot of work being done in that area, but I think that actually that's an issue. But as against that, again, it's so much better experience for a student to be using, to be working at home on their own computer, which is what they're used to doing, than having to come to an exam hall and have a written exam, which is entirely different from anything they've done in their course. So actually, although there is just that difficulty in authenticating who students are when, when the assessment's online, I think that it's, uh, if you like, it's something that we've got to address, but I think that it's a minor concern relative to essentially making the assessment better. Okay. Um, I think the one that I think of most of all is that, uh, again, coming back to my the sort of e-assessment that I've done the most of, the computer marked assessment, mm -hmm. is that actually it can be a 
very consistent experience. I'll just explain what I mean by that. Um, when I've been developing um, assessment that's where people have got to give their answers as a short sentence, the way we develop the answer matching is that we have to human mark responses to start with um, and then use those to develop the computer marking. Now I know that however good a marker I am, I sometimes make mistakes and I sometimes change my mind. The computer will never do that. The computer will mark everybody's work in exactly the same fair way. So that I think is the main advantage with computer marked assessment, it's fair. I mean that's why the word objective was used of objective testing in the early days. It's because it's not down to the whim of a whim of a human being who might change their mind or might not like the student. You know, it's it's fair, and the students realise that it's fair. So that that I think is the main advantage. Excuse me. <coughs> I think there's one other advantage, um, and that comes back to the fact that if you're wanting to assess student competences um, they should again be authentic with the way in which you're teaching so I think it's possible to assess in the same way as you're teaching rather than assessment being something that's entirely different so that that's also an advantage um, I think that the main thing actually I think I may be interpreting the question slightly more as being relevant for us as well as for other universities, though, though I take your point. Mm. I think that our students, most of our students, not all of our students, most of our students are um, becoming digital natives, that they will keep up to date with, you know, they, they're using computers. Computers are everywhere, everyone in the world. So I think the really important thing is that we as teachers essentially stay up to date. Um, I don't know what the technologies are going to be um, three years down the line. I really don't. Certainly not five years down the line because things have changed so much uh, at the moment that it's, very, it's impossible to tell what's going to happen. But I do think that it's really, really important that we as educators stay up to date so that we're not using technology that the students look at it and they think this is so old-fashioned. Um, you almost, almost see it in, I don't know, email. You know, it's something that, that I've become used to in my lifetime, but maybe the younger generation have different ways of communicating. So I think it's appropriate that we use um, a, an appropriate means of, of communicating and that we keep our teaching staff and maybe this is particularly true in in face-to-face -face settings where people are maybe not used to, to, to sort of modern ways of communicating in quite the same way that they really do understand the ways in which they can use things for the teaching so it's it's educating the teachers so that they're able to use computers in their in their teaching um, I've got just one other one um, that I think is important I said a few minutes ago that it's important that we keep up to date and I think I actually said because all of our students are digital natives and they know what they're doing. Actually that's not quite true. Um, <laughs> the, the Open University in the UK and, and here in, in Catalonia it, it's the same. Um, we're committed to enabling access to everybody. Um, certainly there are some people in the UK who, for whatever reason, still aren't quite so digitally connected as the rest of the world. And I think it's really important that we don't forget this small number. It's a very small number of students now. But I think it's very important that we don't forget those students and find ways of enabling them to, to study as well.